<laughs> hey, uh, yeah, I do sleep, but it's it's not time for bedtime now, so I still need to get a few things set up, but we are pretty close to starting here. But thanks, Victor <laughs> and Aiden. Thanks for being the first guys on the stream tonight. Um, I also uploaded a uh, streaming schedule actually on Twitch, so I think I stream uh, every other day, or I'm trying to, and then on the weekend. Um, so I just need to quickly push it out on YouTube. I can totally use just a CPU, that's no problem at all. Um, yeah, I'm showing a bit of the Dini, I'm showing a bit my process of how I created this little headband. Let me actually just pull up the renders for this. Um, and then you can see what I'm talking about. Come on. Yeah, just hear myself here. And please let me know if the stream is good, if the quality is good and the audio, like I'm always having a hard time to, to catch everything correctly. That would help me a lot. And good morning to you too. As Mac for 3D art, I, I believe so. The, the new models nowadays are pretty good and you shouldn't have any issues um, rendering on a Mac. So what I'm talking about, let me just get the right color spaces set up here. I always, it always deactivates this, which I'm not super sure why. Uh, so this is my color profile. And I had a, had a hard time to get this hat piece uh, working in my, in my earlier stream. And yesterday, uh, sorry, uh, the day before yesterday, I tried it a bit out and I found a good way to create this procedurally in Houdini. I'd say it's semi procedural, and the shader is obviously done in Maya, so I did some randomizations on this to get this, these nice beans or pebbles, whatever it is, and then this kind of white stuff, which is, I think, ostrich eggs. Um, yeah, so let me show you how I set that up. And maybe I should move my face out of the way as well, which would help tremendously. Uh, just move it down here. And you can always let me know if it's in the view, if I need to move stuff around. All right. And let me just push it out on Discord as well, so people are aware. Uh, at here, back to streaming. I need to set a stream back for this, so it's all automatic. Catch me on Twitch or YouTube. 
Looks like the internet dropped out. So far, so good. Not sure why this is now dying. Uh huh. Dang it. What did I do? I broke the music now. Uh, let's see, let's hope I can bring it back. Sorry for that. I just need to have some music on my ears, otherwise uh, I'm going crazy. Was it this one? No. Must have been this one. Sorry for this. Let's try this again here. So that's playing, I wanted just to reduce the quality. Like that, all right. All right, so um, good morning and good evening, everyone. Especially on my YouTube here, where I have a few people watching already, which is great. And I hope we will get a few more over on the Twitch side too. That would be amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that is the um, SpaceX launch was cancelled today. I was really looking forward to see that happening, but unfortunately, they cancelled. Well, it's it's good that they cancelled, but I would have loved to see it. All right. Anyways, let me show you what I have done here. So essentially, we have this headband here, Houdini. I started all the way again. So this was my first take, the left stream, and now we have the right stream here. Let me actually get rid of this guy. And so initially I started off with, um, oh, let's actually see. I started off with my little initial torus here, just hide the rest. And what I did, I actually populated smaller rings around this and I was just using um, a simple torus and I flipped it 90 degrees and scaled them slightly. And then I used copy softs to just copy them and rotate them around the origin. Hello from Taiwan, nice to have you. Thanks for joining. Um, so then I copied it several times. Just, and I can show you the reference actually as well, which will help. I can just bring up PureRef and open my most uh, recent images. It should be this guy, Control Y. So this is essentially my reference. So I was trying to more or less get this shape done. And I'm showing you how I set this up. So I created these rings here, which should mimic these, these V patterns. And then I just copy and mirror them. So they're pointing up and down like this. And then I just use a transform to offset them, assign an attribute to them, piece number one. And then I just did an attribute transfer which is, a, which is an integer transfer. And I'm just transferring the values based on distance from my little rings to the to large torus here. And then I did some um, normalized rotation. So when I do the points, when I copy the little pieces on top that they are rotated the correct way. I hope that makes sense. I think it should. Um, if something is obviously not clear, just let me know. And then I do the point deform. So the point deform is essentially transferring the simulation data onto a different geometry. So the trans, um, transformation data is essentially another torus, which is this one, which I created a collision geo, which is this, where the torus folds up. I just used the head, cut it off, and just made it a bit wider because the hair you can see is super wide here. So I wanted to mimic something like that. I did some soft selections like initial transformations before I started the sim. And then in the Vellum Solver, you can see if I just hit play, it should just sim it. You can see it's falling down. And then I'm just freezing it on a frame I like. I do some Vellum process to smoothen it out. And then I just do a time shift to freeze it on frame 27. So all the, all the frames are frame 27. As I said, I'll do the point form and I'm just transferring the values over. 
And then I do some attribute noises to break up the, the wireframes. And then I do a every other selection using um, select one of two, which always skips one point and then just selects the other one. And then I'm blasting the other ones away. So I'm just keeping like a pretty much like a diamond shape. And then I do the for each loop. So I have my two objects here. So this is the one object and then this is the other one. And then I'm switching them out based on... So this is a bit too much, that song. And then I'm switching them out based um, on the piece number, which we specified for using the attribute transfer. Uh, transfer. And then essentially what it's doing... Uh, let's just view from here. And then it's just copying those points. So we are looping over each point here and we're essentially just copying based on what attribute this point has. And then I just get them over here. And that's essentially all I have to do. I have a... <laughs> yeah, there's a police sound, yeah. And then I have the P scale here, which is just there for me to scale them. So I'm just scaling the points essentially just to get a better scale. Um, yeah, then I'm merging together with my little wire. So the wire was created by using this mesh here. I divide this and then I'm sweeping them to get this kind of shape. I add a color to this and then I file cache it out. And this is essentially what I actually um, I hope that is clear. Like I, the chat is pretty quiet. So why don't you say hello and say where you're watching from. This would just help to get some, some um, movement here on the stream. I think my, my speaker is somehow busted. It's a bit scratchy. I'm not sure if this is, um, if you can hear that. From UAE. Man, something is super slow here on my machine today. South Africa, wow, hello. It's snowing there right now. At least I, I've, I've seen a few pictures where it's super snowy. Okay, I'll just leave the music for now. It's like somehow it's like really choppy. So um, I'm just I'm just stopping it. It's, too, it's driving me insane anyways. Um, all right, so we got this guy here and then obviously I just cash it out. Um, I just cash it out to dip. And then I imported this using a standard. Yeah, I was just waiting for this to happen, which is good. I wanted to close it anyways. Um, all right, so now we are in in Maya land essentially, and I just imported this using a stand-in. And essentially, then this is what we rendered at some point. So this is a bit old already. I, I played around with new versions, and I was actually working before I started the stream. I wanted to set up. Um, like I had some issues with my with my colors color um, spaces somehow, so I just had to re-export all my maps, and hopefully this is not working. Um, tonight, though, we will not be fully focused on just the this one. We will be actually working on some more procedural challenges, um, and I'm 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 trying to recreate some leather and maybe uh, a few more other materials just procedurally and I hope I can pull it off um, but that's in the meantime just um, oh wow my was that the GPU yeah so this I'm not sure tonight is a, it's weird like it seems like my machine is almost dying because of the stream um, yeah yeah, it's super cold. Yeah, I think my mom sent me a few pics where it's super snowing and uh, close to the garden route, I think. So everything is super snowed in and, and the cattle are dying and everything. So yeah, super cool, uh, cold out there. Um, yeah, so let me see. 37 watching. I really enjoy that. So let me actually say hello here via text. Hello, everyone. So 
you can see now I'm I'm um, I think I'm transferring the like tra like creating the TX files and I hope it's doing it. So in the meantime, let me just close Z Z brush. Man, my audio is still whack. Um, and then I wanted to check my references for what I want to do today. And I'm not sure if I should just do it in Houdini or should I think I just do it in in, um, in Maya just because I have a few nicer tools. I've got Look Kill in Maya, for instance. So um, I'll be just trying to do to use that instead. All right. So I'm just waiting. I hope I click this. Let me just create it on one and hope it'll do it. Mm, yeah. And then I went like I'm just opening quickly the some reference images on my second monitor here. And then we will get going. Uh, Dang, where did I save them to? I was hoping they were here, but I can't find them anymore. That's a, the problem when you have just too many folders, man. It's just driving me sometimes insane. So the, definitely the capture utility is also taking lots of memory here. I believe if I close it, it will not be good. Let's just try it. I was expecting that, so now my video died. So let me just fix that. Um, I'm not sure why though it was so crazy on my CPU. Sorry, I'll be back in a, in a sec with my video. Okay, I think we, we are back. Okay, so I, it's still not, man, something is totally busted. I should, maybe should have restarted before I started the stream here. It doesn't seem like it's actually creating um, the TX files now. Hi, Camp Ready. Nice to have you. All right, let's just close this down. And let's just try to open up some references here. Um, okay, so as I said, I, I'm actually trying to do some leather today, which is very tricky, but it's, I think, achievable it is just a little bit of a challenge but it, like if you can get it right i think it will look pretty cool especially procedurally procedurally so i need to see how good we can make it and obviously it's better to do it texture based but it's always a nice good learning experience especially uh, it keeps you, you you sharp to just create something procedurally with the nodes you have available um i there's a question if I can make tutorials on Houdini Vellum, and I'm not super familiar with that myself, but creating basic things like cloth or something like that should be fairly straightforward, but you can do way more than just um, cloth dripping down. Hey, Jordi. No, it should be coming. No, it's definitely coming through. Like, is the audio, is the audio weird? Let me actually monitor that quickly. That is not good. So I'm just uh, open. Oh, wow. Okay. I think I have some. Can you? Oh, wow. Can you guys hear it broken? Like really like robotic, distorted, the audio? Yeah, okay, because now what I'm doing, I am using my, oh man, what the hell is going on? I'm super sorry for this.
Yeah, okay, I know it's, it might not be lined up now just because I'm using, like I have a little delay in here. Um, I'm just thinking if I should restart the stream now and try to fix it or if you can just deal with this. It's just off sync. Okay, let me just test what something. Is this now, is it still off sync now or is it now sounding like the cheap mic version again? I guess this is now the cheap mic version again. All right, let, let's just deal with this. Like um, we have it better audio, but not lined up. And I hope you, it, this is just fine. I can just make my face smaller. You don't need to see me tonight. So, so large in screen. I just put it up here in a corner, um, just like that. Anyway, sorry for all this. So I'm just opening up now um, Maya again. And then in the hopes that we will actually can get some work done tonight. So one is this reference here, which is this leather thing, which I'm trying to do. Um, and then I was looking for another reference, of, which is kind of like a shoe thing. Let's just drop that. So I'm just, this one will be a bit more tricky just because it has this uh, peeled off look. Um, but I think we can still do it. At least something very, very similar to this. And leather is always a bit tricky just because it has this distinct pattern. Uh, but we can use some Wally -E and some cell noises, I believe, to get something in in the sort of this. Let's just drop this one here as well. All right, so let's just uh, hit Control A and then we hit Control up to normalize them. Control P and then we should be able to do this, control Y, they will be super huge now. All right, so these are my three pieces I wanna work on, at least um, just uh, use them as reference. And they're all a bit different, but still uh, very similar. So what I'm doing now is actually just uh, setting up my reference here and then I'm using LookDev Kit tonight, which is a pretty cool plugin uh, or a script. Right now it's just a script for Maya and Arnold, which helps you to just start LookDev very easily just by loading in or hitting a button essentially. And it will bring you in like graph spheres and the proper HDI and all, all these funky things. All right, so um, what can we do? We will, I think we will just do this on a pretty basic uh, box or whatever. I can just quickly try to model this. Nothing too fancy as you, as you know that I'm not a modeler, but I think I can model this little pouch without any big issues. Um, so let's just get roughly the same shape in here. So I'm just um, inserting an edge loop if I can get this insert edge loop tool and we run something like here and then we hit bevel and then we have this guy and then we extrude it yeah my little modeling skills are amazing and then obviously we need a few more um, edge loops here to just sharpen it. So I'm just using this edge here and we will delete the ones in the front because we don't care about those. Add a few segments, make it round at the bottom. Something like this. And obviously our edge loops are totally busted, but I hope we can deal with this. Oops. And then we delete this one again. And what else can we do? We can make this maybe a bit larger, but essentially 
Um, this is good enough. I just soften this edge a tiny bit. And then we would just need to go to the side view and move this up. We could actually mirror that, but we don't care much for the backside either. It's just to get something really roughly shaped in here. And so if we have my little object here, let me just rename this pouch. Like that. And then we just save it. The models and what holes? You mean the from the zip or from the from the little thing here? Like these holes? Uh, I think you would texture them, I guess. All right, so let's load in LookDev Kit. I go to my script editor here on the top and then I have it hopefully somewhere. There we go. If I just run it, we should get this nice UI. And I can just uh, hit load look, look dev kit, which will bring everything in. Um, I don't want the shadow mat. And now it should rotate. So we can just change our um, frame numbers here. So it actually does maybe 100 frames rotation, light and asset rotation. We can specify our initial object offset, something like that. We can zoom in a bit. We can maybe use a different lens. Let's try um, 70 mil lens. And now it's a bit flatter and we still get some broken shapes here, but I, as I said, I don't care much. And what I want to do as well, oops, uh, undo view change. Um, I also want to just bring in a little sphere as well, just to have some kind of round object as well. Let's just move it here. And we can also add the Macbeth chart. So we get actually a ref sphere. And then we have it on the side and I can just move that into the view as well. So now we have pretty much all the elements I want to have and we can change my HDI to let's say HDI 11, which is my default one, which I love to work in. Uh, let's just clear everything out and create an AI standard surface shader and just assign it to both my objects here. And now if I go to Arnold Render View, I can, let's see, move this around. I just need to see that I am not populating the view too much, so you can still follow. I want to render this in full HD, uh, which is this one, HD 1080, and then I want to change my render settings, maybe 411, which is great. Ray depth can be set to one as well. Um, and then I want to enable progressive rendering so this is essentially the setup I I do all the time. Like essentially, these are the steps I'm I'm using most of the time. And did I hit render? So yeah. So there we go. We have this going. We don't have subtips yet. So all I can do is go to my attribute editor, sphere shape, Arnold tab, subdiv tab, cat clock on, and now we should have. We should have smooth subtips which is now I did it on the sphere. I want to actually do it on this guy. So now we have smooth subtips. Let's try maybe three iterations to get it nice and smooth. And obviously we have no mess up UVs, but we will not be animating this. I, I So I can use just use a piece channel to create my little noises. So any questions so far? Oh, well, we good. Like uh, I rushed this a bit just because I had some setup issues. Um, we still have music issues, I believe. Weirdly enough, we don't have any music at all now. So I don't know, something is just totally busted. At least you guys can hear me talk. Let's just confirm in the chat. No need for music, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, so basic setup, you can see uh, my recipes. Let me just move them maybe to the top or to at least just somewhere closer. Let's just put them here. Just that that is a bit more interesting. It is distract distracting, I mean. Um, okay, I, I like it just because, oh, maybe I can just put it on my ears here. I can probably do this. 
So now you should not hear anything. But I should. Hi, Rakesh. All right, so I have music on my ears, which is good. Um, but I guess it's not affecting you. All right, so let's get going. So initially what I do, I first obviously bring in uh, Um, I'll just bring in my refs here and I'm, we just need to get something in focus, right? So let me just uh, frame the smaller area here and you can see that it's the skin is actually stretching here on the corners, which is a bit tricky to do, but we can try using curvature to just increase repetitions in folds. So that's actually a cool trick we can try. And overall, the surface is a bit, um, yeah, there's just some kind of movement. It's very subtle, like especially for this specific leather here. This one is a bit more tricky, right? You see this little flakiness and, but also in the folds, you can see there's definitely more going on. And we can utilize curvature to increase bump strengths and all sorts of things, right? So you can be super um, flexible what you want to do here. Um, look, Def Kid, let's just move it on the side. I, I'll just close it actually, I don't need it, I think. Hey, uh, good morning. <laughs> that was German, a quick German, hello. Um, all right, so let's move this here. It's not obstructing. We can move this actually over a bit and move this up a bit. I always need to move my views all the time. It's just a habit I have just set up, set up everything. So it's not obstructing. All right, so let's just start off with a basic uh, color variation. So what I like to do is just use um, cell noise and I actually never tried to use a cell noise um, with a, if the pattern works on cell noises too. Oh, it does, that's interesting. All right, I think it does. So let's just create an AI ramp here and plug this into the palette. And if I increase my noise, I will explain what it does in a, in a short amount of time. So if I um, crank up my scale, let's say 10, 10 and 10, Okay, let's go even like, we are on object space, let's go 100. Okay, so we have all these things. Weirdly enough, they are, they seem to be stretching, which they shouldn't be doing. So this in world space is not stretching. Let's just work on world space then, which is, which is fine enough. So let's just see if I, Put some colors in the ramp now so let's say um we just hit s to get the color picker so we have um oh thanks for the follow over on twitch here hannibal much appreciated um let's just pick this or just set the same color make sure you're in in, in your correct um color picking role which seems weird that it's output srgb anyways so I'm just going to S, uh, to change the mode to RGB0255 and I'm just typing in 197, 133 and 86. All right, so we got one color here and I'll just pick the same color over here. Oh, so the palette is not working as I would expect it to. Yeah, no, it's not doing what I thought it would be doing. Normally, if you use a palette, a palette for the cell noise, let's see. Oh, it's still weird. I was hoping that it should only pick the colors which I specify in the palette here and not all the colors that makes sense well maybe it's just something I I don't fully understand hey Dujan look Def kid is working so far <laughs> um, yeah so you can I guess you know what I'm doing here <laughs> I'm just I didn't have much time this week to try this out yeah it does look like there's um, card not cardboard but um, cork cork pin boards obviously I we, we need to do a noise instead 
and not a cell noise for this. So let's just do the same, go P world and just pick the same colors here. And then we just go maybe 20. So I want just a very, very, very fine color variation. And I think my noises are now too small. Oh, oh, maybe not. You can see there is like, it might be the spec, right? The bump on it, but it's still, I think there's some, there's definitely some color shifts going on. So I might just, first of all, just check to make this a bit more saturated. And let's just disable the progressive refinement and just keep the um, progressive rendering on. And again, this is just, I, I don't have any, this is not plugged into the shader. I'm just reading it directly. So if I would plug it into the shader, we should actually get the lighting information, right? And if I bring up look dev kit again, I can rotate the lights. Uh, just uh, load the UI here. So now if I don't like the light rotation, I can just offset this and we get a different kind of light angle. My map right now does not have any top down light. So what I want to do maybe is just um, rotate this. Just to get some, some light hitting it. And that's why I like to have a ball because it will catch everything, right? Catch all the light. Um, yeah, so we have this and obviously we need to play with the roughness so we can just get something right now in here. That's just super rough object like this. You can see it will be even rougher, but let's just now create a cell noise. And after that, we can already try the curvature approach to actually change the bump and the frequency. So cell noise and we want an AI bump and I'm just plugging this in here and move this to my normal camera and move this changes to cell look through selected world space and density full on and let's just crank up the scale maybe to 10 and then we can add more octaves to just break it up a bit and let's just see what this looks like Oh, what the hell man we got some weird stuff today it might be the smoothing of the tangents here uh, smooth tangents well it did help I was hoping okay we might need to have UVs on it but it doesn't make sense then it doesn't need to be any UVs on it at least not in in my head Okay, now it's different. So what the fuck? So, so man, something is totally busted here. So world space seems to be working. <laughs> I hope, no, it still doesn't work. This must be a bug though, right? This is not normal that, like I know I don't have UVs on us, but do I need to have UVs on it? I don't think so. Uh, not this guy. I I would say it shouldn't be that, no. Let's just do automatic UVs. The most ugliest UVs ever. Dude, it's still busted. All right. Uh, what is this madness now? I can't see. I, <laughs> I had so many issues today. So let's try it now. UV based. Okay, now it's gone. And I'm not sure why the rotation changed too. Didn't I just have it like facing this way? All right. So if I put it on UV space, you just delete it and reopen. Yeah. I'm sure it's it, it's deceptives. No, it's not deceptives. <laughs> so why is world position not working? This look looks totally fine. This works fine. 
If I use this as a bump map, it's not fine. Okay, now it's fine. Let's crank it. No, I, I don't think it's working. Maybe this is like a bug. What a great stream tonight. Dang it. Let's try um, cell two. So I do see it here. It, it calls for a restart, right? Definitely calls for a restart. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can do the merging, but I don't. <laughs> uh, people say geo problem. Come on, it's the best model ever. You, maybe this might be the problem then. Don't say it's a geo, man. I spent so much time modeling this thing. Okay, let's just delete this bottom face. And why did it reset again? You see, man, something is totally busted. Freezing transforms just to make nicer UVs here. Let's just do a shift connect components. Click, click G, click, click G, click, click G. And then we do a multi-cut, multi-cut, come on. Cut one. Oh, okay. So now we just have quads and now crappy geo, nothing funky on this end. Uh, yeah, I'm currently working from home. Um, yeah, I think that this should be it. So freeze transforms again, delete all the history. We have this guy on here. Let's see what we get now. All right, subdivs on, one subdiv here, linear smoothing, smooth tangents, blah, blah, blah. Run it again. <laughs> it's driving me insane. <laughs> Come on. Pin corners. still it's still it's still weird the weirdest thing is that this is fine the pattern is fine it goes into the bump map and the bump map freaks out what if i do displacement just for the fun of it why not if i do this well you can see this is why i don't do live streams <laughs> Because there's so man, so much shit going on. All right, so super low scale. I was hoping we could see some auto bump, but we don't even see that. And the sphere is, is just is just not doing anything. Yeah, you, you guys are having fun because I'm sweating here my ass off. <laughs> um, also, my GPU is going crazy. I don't know. Let me just... No, I don't want to restart. I, I, because this seems to be... be fine. Okay, we kill the displacement. Man, the, the bump is such an important thing. We can't do it without bump. Um, but we can try the curvature thing now, which I tried to do, and we can just try it and see how, how well this works. All right, so curvature is essentially checking how, how the surface normals are, and based off the normals, it will give you a um, black and white map. So you can boost the radius, you can invert this to concave only, and I'm hoping maybe we should just smooth it one time. Let's just smooth it, maybe this will be better. Uh, mesh smooth one time. Yeah, we will add bump and comp. That's that's the way to do it. Make the compers happy, right? They're always so lazy anyways. 
they always get perfect renders. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so let's see, radius. So I'm trying to get this edge more prominent and even this is not smooth. So let's just, let's just do, hey, Sam, thanks for the subscription, uh, Kamal, much appreciated. So disable this, look at the wireframe. This is what it is. Uh, we just smooth it again. Just because we can. Alt D, delete history, curvature applied. This should be now smooth enough. So there's definitely no problem with the mesh. Like this is clean, I would say. Hey, <laughs> Juicy, yeah, I'm trying to use curvature now to um, mess around my bump map. So I have more bumps in the crevices like you would see here or here. But as you can see, I'm struggling to get stuff working. But yeah, thanks for show, uh, showing up, David. Hmm. Yeah, dang it, it's a bit frustrating tonight. Let, we can try occlusion, is that any better? Occlusion is very similar to a curvature. Similar, I'm saying, it's not the same, it's similar. So in, in here I can say invert normals and I can change my scale. And this is essentially now giving me objects which are super close to each other. Um, but yeah, so we need curvature for this to work because I need to get exactly this, but I thought we can get it a bit cleaner than this. And I'm not sure why I get this wacky edge in there too. Hey Kieran, thanks for the subscription here on YouTube. Much appreciate it. Thank you. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is use this mask as a like user coverage as a mask to drive my bump iterations or let's say my repetition on my on my um, noises so if i plug in the noise in here uh where's my noise uh, da, 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 da. just create a new one just to visualize it all right and then we just increase the scale to 15 maybe like that and even this is weird super weird pref and uv space uv space should be nice but we see obviously the seams if i do this procedurally yeah let's go freaking world space all right so what i want to do i want to use i want to change my repetitions and drive this with my max so what i want to do here um, I'm creating a AI color correct or am I, yeah, let's do a color correct like this. And for my, uh, scale, I'm just plugging in my out color. So essentially what this is now doing, I don't have, when it, this is on zero, we don't have any repetitions going on. Right? So if I do on one, we have one repetition. If I do, uh, first of all, let's say the color management. If I put this to 10, we have 10 reps here, right? Uh, good night, Jimmy. Thanks for joining. Uh, we have quite a few view uh, uh, viewers already here, which I highly appreciate. Like we're almost hitting 51 here, which is uh, pretty good on Twitch and YouTube. So my, my plan now is to have this set up and use the curvature to drive the repetition, right? So I'm using the curvature now and I'm just plugging this into the mask. Um, Nothing happens now because I didn't change any values. But if I would change, um, like let's say I, I um, increase the multiplier, or if I, uh, yeah, if I just increase this here, which is my multiplier, it's essentially just a gain. Um, if I 
What do we have here? Alpha multiply. Okay. If I just put in two, we should have double the the scale. You can see now we have way more repetitions in the crevices here. And if I do this, obviously not with two, maybe less. You can now see that there is some kind of stretching going on and we can just affect maybe one channel, right? To get this uh, super stretched look. Um, and if we overall increase the scale, which is right now um, on 10, I believe, we can just go down here. And you should now see that we have a bit more repetition in, in these edges here. And if you want to have a different kind of um, like a stretched look, you would just change this to RGB here. Uh, sorry, just changes to RGB. Where was I? Here. And then you can say you can change the the stretchiness, for instance. So now we are stretching this on the y axis. If we want to stretch it on a different axis, we just change the colors. This is essentially X Y Z components which we are stretching here. And you can see that works uh, fairly easy and fairly well. And you can do the same with the multiply, right? So right now we're multiplying every value of one, but let's say we just want to stretch it in a, one single direction. You just change one value, for instance. So now we are, let's, we don't maybe, we, let's just change, uh, increase this one to two, the R. So now we are stretching this only in the R, which is the X component, essentially. Um, does that make sense? Like at least what I'm trying to do here. Let me know. Um, we, we should a actually able to showcase this on the sphere here as well. If I um, just uh, use a few edge loops and I do a soft select and I move it down and then I can just do something like this, which should mimic, uh, which should mimic some kind of bumps or stretches, right? All right, so now we have this. If I smooth this again, smooth like that. And I have one septive on it. If I update my render. Let's maybe do this. And another sub. Thank you very much for the sub here over on uh, YouTube. Uh, let's see if I do maybe just I'm just I might be messing around with my system too much let's just try 35 okay so you can see now we have some kind of weird stretching going on and this is essentially what I wanted to do maybe I was just a bit too extreme with my values here so I'm still using the curvature which looks like this and we can try to obviously not multiply it so much Try a few different values here until we get what we want. What if convex? Convex is the outside curvature. And we definitely want the concave one, which is which is catching crevices which go inside essentially. And then I have my color correct. And if I just uh, put this to a, a single wide value, which is driving my noise, which is driving a surface shader, and I have my color correct also on white, we don't, we should not see any difference, right? So if I obviously now change my scale, let's say I go up back up to a value of three or four, this is my repetition right now. And now what I wanna do, I want to, I have this value of four and I just wanna multiply, let's say one axis with this. So if I go to RGB and I had another subscription, which is a long bit, uh, bit code numbers, but thank you very much for the sub here. So if I go to, you can now see we get this nice kind of stretch as if the leather or the, or the cloth or whatever is stretching on that one axis because of the, the bendiness of the surface. And you can use that with wrinkles and you can use these kind of techniques for all sorts of funky things. Um, you can see if I just slowly move it, we just get it to stretch a bit and then we can use the other axes as well um, just to get something in here. All right, 
So I, I like this already, but then again, my shader is busted, I believe. So if I, maybe we can try it on the sphere instead. So we have the standard surface shader. If I plug this in here, we get this. If I, let's just go to metallic and we go down with the roughness. We have a super nice Chrome look. And if I create an A, I bump to D node and I plug my out luminance red to my bump map and connect this to here. Oh, huh, this seems to work now. This seems to work. Interesting. All right, whatever I did, I'm not sure if it will work on the other one. Uh, let's just save this and plug this back in here. Obviously it's now way nice and juicy. What I mean by juicy, it's shiny. So um, just had to drink some water. I'm talking too much again. Normally I don't talk that much. All right, so now let's just see if this works as well on this guy. And maybe I need to assign it first. Hey, Jericho, Jason. Thank you very much for the subscription over on YouTube here. Uh, let's see. I believe it seems, oh, does it seem to work? I'm not sure, I'm still not sure. Let's, I'm not super convinced. Let's just scale up our little sphere and just work with this for now. So I just put this a bit larger here in the front. There we go. Enable progressive refinement. I have a suspicion. Maybe not. <laughs> it still feels super slow, like something is so weird. Okay, so I'm I'm now not seeing the same repetition as we were seeing before. Maybe because I scaled it and our noise is in a different space. Is that it? It's in world space, so yeah, that that might be why. Um, let's just increase our um, pattern by just first visualizing it again. Uh, just by, I think this one is the correct one. Yep, so I'm just using the color correct again just to push my overall subtives. Uh, sorry, um, not subtives, I mean um, the scale of my noises. So now we have a way finer grid here and at some point we will be switching back to the cell noise um, and now we need to see if I push my um, channels again to see way more distortion in the crevices here. So let's see, push this. I'm not sure why I don't see it anymore. Well, I now I see it. Oh, I think by scaling it up, my curvature changed. I bet that's what it is. I, I bet the intensity changed because the curvature got stronger and then my noises broke. So that's something to, to keep in mind that when you change or scale your objects, you are scaling occlusion and curvature masks as well. All right, so now we have a value pretty much around one. And obviously now my noise is uh, way too strong because I messed around with the with those values. Um, but in a color correct, we can just obviously just go back to one first and then we can just push them again. And you can now see by going to 1.8, we get this nice stretched feel to it. And we can do the same with the B channel maybe not on two but maybe on 1.4 and this one too it's it might be a bit hard to see on the stream as well but you essentially what i'm trying to do is just create this stretched look at the bottom here and i 
totally went too far with this. So let's go maybe 1.2. Yeah, this might do it. And then let's see what we what we're looking at here. Yeah, it does kind of work, I think. Like it's definitely stretching this super strong on the on the corners here. And based on the curvature, I think it might be a bit too strong just because my curvature map itself is it just just a bit um too simple and I'm somehow not digging this and I'm not sure why this is so crappy yeah we might like I might need to I, I maybe need to do something else tonight like because this is not working at all tonight I'm thinking of maybe switching over to Houdini and do some grooming or maybe show some vellum stuff or at least me trying to to do. Would you like rather to see that? Like I jump to Houdini and do some more sim stuff instead of just look dev. Um, <laughs> morning master. About the way to my path. Um, sorry, no, I don't follow the question, understand the question. I, I missed um, Andre's question. Did you specialize on look dev? Um, and shading at a university or just attend a university at all. So I did go to a university, but honestly, I would say I'm self-taught just because the university did not help me much in developing my skills. Um, so I'm pretty much self-taught, yeah. Okay, so let's just do Houdini stuff then. Okay, I'm, I'm just giving up on this. And the hopes that the stream will come back to life um that's just uh i'm not even sure if i pull can pull houdini off now like I, as i said i'm not the best so let's just load houdini and see what we get in the meantime i'm open to any questions here arakash um when I bring animated a lemming from Houdini to Maya, I run into an empty UV set issue. Did you, are you sure you exported the UV sets with it? Like on the ABC exporter? That's something which might be it. So we can also do some destruction, like basic <laughs> destruction stuff as well, but we'll see what we, what I can pull off now just by free balling. Um, Houdini is essentially a effects software, or at least it was just for effects, like um, creating destruction, uh, volume explosions, water sims, all sorts of things. Wow, oh, it was bright. But they added so many more and more features that it's now actually a um, all round 3D application. So you can do all sorts of funky things with this. Uh, we can do like maybe a little introduction. Like, uh, like I'm sure like we have a few Houdini people on the stream now, which are very familiar with the matter. Um, but I can do maybe a little bit of an introduction, which maybe, which might be a bit helpful. Uh, let's just switch this to maybe gray. All right, so uh, one thing to know is that Houdini is in meter scale. So one unit is one meter. So if you bring in objects, they might be at a different scale, which is sometimes weird, but it shouldn't be much of an issue. So vellum, obviously, right? So let's just create a pig here, <laughs> test pig. That's always like, I like to use this. They also have the squid. Actually, let's use a squid for this, which my uh, squab, it's on a squid, squab. Um, this guy, it comes in texture. Let's just move it up a bit. Uh, let's just call this squab. Let's just call it squib actually, squid. I think that's what it is, isn't it? Squid. So this is our geometry and we, we don't need to care about the shader right now. We can keep it on, uh, but we can just move it up, um, upwards using the translation here. Uh, come on, let's just move it up to units. And um, I think we can just add a vellum constraint here. 
Uh, let's just do, oh, what can we do? It was a cloth and struts. I think that's all we have to apply for this. Um, so now it, it creates these constraints. So I think we can uh, remash it first. Or is it just a reduce? Poly reduce. Oh, we can do difficulty easy, which is not as complicated mesh, I think. This might be a bit easier on the on the sim side. So let's just use it like that. And if I do a vellum cloth, you can see it already creates all these constraints. And it might still be a bit too heavy. Um, so let's just do another vellum strut here, which struts are essentially like little um, wires which are holding the mesh together. And then we can do a vellum, constra uh, vellum solver here. Um, there it is. I hope I'm doing everything right here. If we hit play, we should fall down at least. It does fall down and it falls to infinity because I don't think we have anything set up in here. We can have a ground position. So now we have an intersecting ground plane. Can it play? And now it should collide with it. And you can see now it looks already alive. You can see how the arm is squishy now. And essentially, Vellum is a soft body solver. You can use it for rigid bodies too if you crank up your um, constraints. Um, but this is made for cloth or like soft bodies in general. So if I change it now to medium, it might be a bit slower on this. Oh no, it's not too bad actually. But you can see, you know, everything is deforming with this. And we can change parameters. So I'm not super familiar with all those parameters, but we can try a few things. Um, so first of all, let me just try the, the poly reduce here, um, which is essentially just reducing the poly counts. So right now we have um, 20,000 20, vertices. I can percent to keep maybe 10%. Oh yeah, I'm no life, that's great. So now we have only 1,000 left, right? So from what do we have 20,000 to 1,000. If I plug this into my sim instead, let's see what we get now. We should get a way faster sim. And you can see everything is a bit different, but it is way faster to sim. And I think the sim is running on the GPU. Um, a problem is I'm actually running my stream on the GPU, so I'm not sure if this is affecting it at all. It might, it might make it a bit um, stuttery, but I don't know. So once you have this, we can try a poly, um, uh, sorry, a point deform. Um, so the required mesh you want to deform. So I want to deform the high mesh, which is this. The rest point lattice is the reduced one. And then I think this one is the deform point, which is the vellum geometry. So now you can see that it transferred over the sim from my low rest to the high rest. And we can play around with the radius a bit to just to smoothen out the um, transfer of, of points. Because we don't have the same point number, we can now see that our dense mesh is being deformed with the less dense mesh. And that's typically the way you do. You have a low rest geometry, you sim that, and then you apply it to the, the points to a different one. So um, yeah, and obviously now we can play around with the, 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 the settings here. So the cloth is essentially um, the skin, which is around this, like how stretchy it is and stuff like that. And the struts is holding this, the structure together. So if you change the struts, and make them soft, it will just collapse, right? So we can, I can try to mimic that by just reducing the strut, um, strut, what is it called? Stiffness. And you can, instead of changing this value here, you can change this, which is essentially a factor. So let's try, uh, let's try to make it very low. Let's try 0 0.001 and see what we get. Um, you can see now it's it's almost collapsing, right? The, the whole structure is just falling apart. And you can see it's almost like a balloon now with something really, really squishy. And a squid, I think, would do this, like it would deflate so much. 
And obviously the cool thing now is, oh, let's try a pig hat. You can just do pig hat. Or what you what would be even better, you can use a switch. And then I don't need to mess around with these inputs. I can just do my switch here. And now we have this, and now I can switch it to number one. And oops, pig head dead. We need to move it up, obviously. To this. Blah blah blah. And this is essentially what that is. And you can see I'm now transferring the points again from the low to the high, and we get this. Um, there's some issues here. It's, I think, just because um, we don't have enough um, sim constraints as much of sim, what is it called? Uh, oh, I got some note there. I got a message on OBS encoding overload or something like that. I guess that is not a good sign. Must be the camera or something. Um, so I think the collision passes. If we can just maybe crank it up to 50, we should have less, I believe. No, still the same. Um, post collision. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing now. Oh, no, still the same. I was almost happy. Uh, we can try add, adding more subsets, which will just make the sim slower, but it will check for more. Yeah, I don't know. It might be actually the low low res is going in there. The squid has to dehydrate when it gets squashed. I mean, it loses its it loses liquid. Um, I'm not sure if I can do that. I think it's just a low res, which is actually messing up here. Oh no, it's actually not the low res. Low res is good. It must be the point deform which messes it up. Okay, so the sim is good. It's just a point deformer here, which is a bit busted. Hey, O30XD, thanks for the YouTube subscription here. You should subdivide it. You mean a low res is too smooth? Well, this is this works too now. I just set, change the settings a bit. You can see now it's super squashy, and you can use all sorts of things. You can apply vellum to like. Um, like uh sorry you can use vellum for like um bodies of a, of a car like when you do a car crash you can uh, do a vellum on the bonnet to just have a like it collapses and, and keeps its shape and you can use that with um the plastic solver or the plastic option in here or it's called plasticity i believe um, which just means uh keep 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 the same shape here uh yang Wangling, thanks for the subscription as well much appreciate it um, let's see where the plastic is. And obviously you can all do the, all do all these things, but you can also just be lazy and just click the shelf button. So on the vellum here, you can apply vellum cloth and it will just do it. Um, so you can, yeah, vellum grains will actually create a grain solver from objects. So it's, it's almost like sand particles, or you can use it for mud and all sorts of things. Uh, balloon is pretty interesting. But these are all the shelf things. And essentially what the shelf does, it just creates you these preset um, things here, these little operators. And you have all, all sorts of things in here as well. And each of them has its own settings. So you can um, change, I think they all have presets or options here too. Oh, actually this is the same. So if you can use pressure, I think, which acts as a balloon then. I think that's what the balloon does. Let's try. Let's see what we can do. So now we have this pressure thing. Let's see what we can change up here. Um, obviously this is now me just messing around. I have not really, I don't really know the parameters as well I would, as I do on, uh, if I would work with look dev. But now you can see by just increasing the, the st stiffness of the pressure, This pig, yeah. Um, you can see now it just maintains its shape. Let's see if we push it even further. It's now super stiff, right? And it's it's pretty funny. 
And I think Instagram is full of these simulations. So I could also use Tommy, which is the the human which they have in here. I can just put it in switch number three or number two, and actually it is. And if I move Tommy up, make mix make him um, low res. Yeah, let's just do this, move him up. And let's just see what we get with Tommy. If Tommy falls to the ground. And I think YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but Instagram is loaded with these things. Uh, Tommy and High is not, is not digging it because he has a shirt on. I think he will just explode now. Oh, <laughs> his head. Yeah, so if I would if I would render this, uh, put it on Instagram, people will freak out. Um, it's pretty funny though. Yeah, so you can do obviously if you know what you're doing, which I clearly have no clue. Uh, you can mess around with these things quite nicely. Um, and another thing is you can totally do, um, man, it's still struggling again with this encoding. Um, let's do obviously some shattering of objects and spheres and whatnot. So if you, let's say you have a sphere, you make it a, a um, polygon here. And these are honestly super basic things, right? This is, uh, I think you get lots of things like tutorials on this. So there's an RBD, oh, which one's it called now? So many RBDs now. Um, RBD material fracture, I believe is the thing I'm looking for, which, do, which does a pre-fracturing. You can see it's already loading all these things. And what it's doing you can see we have the fracture pieces already. And if I just do an RBD, uh, is it RBD bullet solver? I think it is. And if I would just sim this now, it already has my ground floor, everything should fall down and it does not shatter. I think the reason is because my constraints are too, too set too high. So we can go into constraints in here, uh, reduce the primary strength and now boom, shatters, right? And uh, the cool thing is uh, you can just, um, obviously you can add with these two things, you can already make a really convincing look. You can add chipping detail. So now each corner should be chipped off and you have way smaller fracture pieces. And you can see now we get these little fracture pieces all over the place. It's a bit expensive to use, but it's it ad definitely adds stuff. Uh, right now we have two fracture levels. So if we change the scatter points, increase the scatter points, we should have larger chunks and then way smaller chunks as well, which we can see already. Let's go maybe 15. And if I hit play now or sim, not play, you can see now we have way more smaller things. Another cool thing is we can display, uh, let's see if, we can, if I can figure it out. You can display the um, strength of the constraints and visualize, I believe. Um, or was it show, was it not in here? Show bullet constraint guides. Hmm. Come on, don't, don't drive me crazy now. Um, you can actually show or visualize the constraints, but I'm, I forgot how to visualize them. Show constraints, they are. Oh, there you go. You can see them here now. So, and then there should be a visualizer somewhere. This is just showing when they break. I think there's like a visualize constraints in here. RBD exploded view. What was it called? Show active so sleeping, constraint, show bullet constraint guides. Is it this? Yeah. And then there's also a way to show the strengths in the viewport. Man, I forgot how to do that. This was actually pretty cool. 
but I right now forgot it. I think it was you can right click or something. And you were able to visualize the numbers, like how many, how much force is actually affect, like impacting it. Maybe someone knows in the stream knows how to how to show it. Mm, let's see. So these are our constraints. So they they shatter, and then right now they will just um, die. And these are the breaking thresholds. So it will break when the this when it's bending further than this, then it will just shatter. Um, and we can make it soft constraint and we can obviously reset the constraints in here. So on the constraints in here, we say, okay, primary strength was 2.2 on thou and 100. Let's see what happens. If it still shatters the same way, you can see only a few bits and pieces and then this top section stays together. This is just by setting the constraints strengths, right? So this is pretty cool. And what you can do, you can switch to soft constraint when it's broken. What it means is that they would actually break but then they will stick together and they will not really do much more. It's almost like a like a super soft object here. And you can see the constraints in here now, the soft constraints. Um, just hitting X. Yeah, no, X is not is not what I mean, really. Maybe I just need to show the constraints instead. So this is the constraints. Um, and if I disable the switch to soft you can see now they just die let me just google that quickly um visualize rbd constraints so we can watch this together Why not? Why, why is this not on top? Man, yeah, something is <laughs> today is weird. I can't even put windows on top of Houdini. Okay, so you got to deal with me having it on the side. I thought there was a note to visualize the constraints. Where is it? Okay, well, I will find it someday. Um, so what I, I just wanted to show the strength and I thought you can do it in here somewhere. Show object links, no. All right, so anyways, this is now shattering and you can now obviously you can have it like an object flies in there or whatever. You can add like collision objects and sims and whatnot in here and you can have this uh, work together with um, with Vellum, for instance, right? So uh, here's plasticity, which means it will um, keep its shape. You have all these sorts and you can have, for instance, um, have it break by force. So when there is a really strong force, only then it should shatter, right? Um, obviously we need to specify a force and there was a node I believe to visualize it so this is not only affecting these two constraints only when soft and hard so when the soft when it's bendiness and it's twisting and there's um, torque and tension only then it will snap but you can change this to glue constraint so now um, they will shatter when there's a certain force um, hit like when it's hit by a certain force then it will break constraints so you have all sorts of things by impact and and I'm so sure there was a node for this. Um, let's see, I'll be deconfigure. Is that, ex it's, I think it's not the exploded view. Exploded view should essentially just explode the, uh, where is it? So what this is just doing is showing me the the, the like the pieces itself. I can show the constraints too. So this is showing me the stiffness. Interesting. So this is what I wanted to see. I'm not sure if this is how I always used to see it. 
So by, by this you can see now on the top left corner what the min and max strengths are and based off that for instance you can set up your break thresholds and all these things which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that's so true. So these are quite a few things which I just mess around with and then you can also do I think also something which I did for um, for my flamethrower thing see if I still have that open. Yeah, I'm not sure. Houdini is now on top, which I don't know why that is. I'm not even sure how I did it. Always on top. Um, so what, yeah, let me just put, kind of just minimize this. Um, so I, I guess if you guys know that I, I did a tutorial on a flamethrower at some point um, on this thing here. Oh, face cam died too. Everything is falling apart. This is just insane today. This is a sign, I believe. Uh, let me just fix the cam quickly. I think I know what that is. But thanks for the heads up. Cam is back, woohoo. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially how I did that, I can just go up a level here and just hide them. Um, to create these fluids, um, I was using a particle emitter. So I was using a, a disc or a circle, I think. And on the circle, I was scattering some points. I was using scatter. Uh, which will give me points. I can um, obviously reduce the amount and then I can as add a, let's maybe move this over here. And on the points, for instance, I could just add a direction by using just a simple um, vector to it. So I can just use normals, for instance, it should have normals. And if it doesn't, we can just create the normals. I guess it doesn't have it. Now it has normals. Now each point should have normals. Um, no, why don't they take it over? No, we're in. Should point normals here. Now they have normals, that should point normals. And now I can convert them using a point wrangle, which is just a simple uh, code editor essentially. So what we can do, we can say v at v vector type named vector. We can say v at v is normal. So now I have a vector created with normals in it. So now we can do a, um, um, what are those called? I forgot that as well. Um, so we just want a simple solver here, and I think it's just called um, what are they called? Particle solver. Let's see. Uh, sorry, a uh, pop solver. Man, what the hell? Where's my head today? So pop solvers are, um, you need a VOPnet for that, which is a different context. Is it a, oh, is it a DOPnet? Oh, man. There you go. DOPnet, go in here, and now we have the particles in here, and in here we can do a pop solve um, like that, and we need a pop source, I believe. Uh, pop sources and a, is it just an object? It's a pop object as well. I'm not sure if this is what we need, but maybe it is. 
So the pop source is essentially just what we would just want to have um, our source is essentially our um, first context geometry, which are my points. Uh, let's see if this is doing it already. It's doing nothing. We don't have gravity, so we can just use a gravity force in here. Still nothing. Why is there nothing? We should actually have inherit velocity, which it does. So any point is why this is again already not working would be great. Oh, we might need to have the birth scatter onto surface, use all points. Hey, so now they're falling down based on the velocity I provided. And obviously now we can use the point wrangle. We can say, oh, we want more velocity. So we can say, um, v at v, uh, v, oh, is it plus? I keep forgetting this. And as, as I said, this is just a very simple introduction. So I'm um, saying v at v multiply equals to, and we can just do a, a channel set here, and we can say just speed, which will create me a slider, and then the slider will control the velocity. So if I just do this, let's just visualize it. Um, you can see that the velocities are changing and hopefully the sim is changing too. You can see now we almost have some kind of bullets or whatever. And essentially this is how I did the flamethrower and then I did some noises and every um, to, to break up the, the motion. And then I was converting this to, we can try to get it actually to work. Um, so we have now these particles streaming out. Uh, let's just move them up in general. So we can just move the whole, whole um, circle up by five units like that. And we can add H to it too. So um, we can the first we can do it in here, or we, I think we can have them die off based on age. So they have age particles. Uh, let's see. We also want a ground plane. Trying to merge it. Come on, flip it, and now we should have them hitting the ground. Um, on the ground on my pop object we can add some uh, friction oh it is already on oh that's sorry that's a ground plane pop object um, we can have some friction so they don't slide as much they should get slower and slower you can see they start to stop and I'm not sure why they don't die yet um, I think we need to provide them with a age attribute or do they have age? So we can go to pop object here and go down to um, geometry, which should have show us all the attributes. So we have age in here and I'm the impression that you can kill them based on age. I'm not sure if we just need, need to create a blast instead or a um, point wrangle, I believe. Let's just check quickly. And obviously all of this is in, um, in a tutorial I did, but as you can see, my head is like a little, you have to tell them to die. Okay, I, I guess it was in here then. Thank you. Now let's see if I can find it. Um, H particles. So it's not, obviously we don't want hit because we don't want to add another round of attributes. Let's see if I can find it. We can, uh, when they, we can have them die on impact too, which is I think something we can try. So now they just die here and don't slide. Um, but we probably don't want that. Let's see if I can find the die. 
H particles. I thought it was called reaping or something. Um, yeah, well, if you know, maybe it's in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, we have our particles here and we only want to have our pop object exported. So we just should, should be able to just do this. Um, so now it should only, let's actually do it the other way. It's just to pop. So now we just have the pop object exported and now we can do visualize. Um, oh man, this is, I'm trying to <laughs> do all this out of my head here. I think it's called a uh, volume rasterize. Maybe it's not man. And now my Hey, thanks for the follow here on Twitch, Sad Machine. Much appreciated. Um, what was it called? Uh, volume rasterize attributes, I believe. And then we need to specify attributes. So um, I think there's like um, oh, the pop. Is it like source? Pyro source. Ah. Yeah, I should have done this before and not pre-polling this. And I think that it was a really bad idea for me to do this. Um, let's just do um, source smoke. It should give me density. We have temperature. So now we have this. And then in here, I believe we can do density for now. And this should give me that. And this is now just obviously super high speed density and we can try to just make them sl uh, die quickly on imp in on input on on die on when it's hitting a surface so we don't have so many particles so now they just die which is fair enough like i can deal with that that's okay and then we would do a um is that a volume solver Was it pyro solver? RBD. Was it pyro solver? I think it was called something new now. Didn't I have something new in Houdini 18? Oh, or is it that? Pyro solver 2 dynamics node. Yeah, I think that is it. Uh, which version is it? Pyro, Pyro source. I guess it is the Pyro solver here. It's weird that it doesn't have an icon. Essentially, now if you have your volume created with the attributes provided, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think this is the correct one. If I plug this in, so it needs volumes to start the sim. And hopefully now this is essentially all we need to do to get a basic um, smoke sim. Um, and we can do a, we can visualize it too. That's the scale. Oh, I'm struggling. People are going <laughs> because I'm not showing my best performance here today. Um, normally what I do, I just do that myself in a dot net and create all the um, the visualizers and everything in there. So I have not really much work with this new solver here. Um, this is, we don't want any dissipation right, right now. Mm, we can try to play around with the temperature so we can just have it like um, move up essentially. We can just move the buoyancy. So now they should move up. And we don't have any any forces yet. So I think we need, if we add wind, I think we can go in here and add a gas solver. And then there's a wind, I believe. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the support here, Alex. I, I need to prepare a bit better, like especially if I know what I'm trying to do here. That are called wind, gas, wind. Um, gas microsoft is here so now we should have a wind I, i'm not sure I, I think the interface is a bit weird i 
Um, so wind direction is in, in X, so it's sideways. If we maybe push it, you can see now that it's drifting toward the side. And obviously we don't have any turbulences, so you can, but you can already see the wind is doing something. So we can do a gas turbulence and we can obviously merge them now. Um, we can actually just select them and click all to create a merge plug these together so we have gas, gas turbulence which is essentially we can visualize it too which is just a like a noise field where it's passing through to just break up everything and obviously we can make the frequency or the scale a lot um, a lot bigger um, oh that's just intensity so I mean the swirl size I guess I have a large swirl size so it's really big masses of volume which are being moved by this Yeah, so this is now a, a super fast way to create some kind of smoke, I guess. You can see now it's drifting sideways and based on the added, it's it's just moving up and down. And it doesn't look too bad, honestly. It looks, let's say it looks half bad. <laughs> and then I'm actually surprised that I was able to do something tonight. Um, and then we can go to lights and uh, let's do add some shadowing. So if I view from the top here and I hit control on my, um, uh, which one is it? I thought there was a, uh, is that skylight which I want to do? Um, I guess so. No, I did not click the wrong one. Ha, huh. not an end flight. Let's try the skylight should give me two things yeah okay uh, we can cannot show it in the viewport but now we have you can see now we have nice shadows here now we see some thickness to it um, and we can also go back in here pyro source stop net so this is all my particles and we can do a file cache first. Uh, we can do the file cache here. So what this will, what this is doing, first of all, we can add motion blur to this. And uh, we can go a bit further here so you can see the motion blur. We can increase the particle size to actually have an initial thickness to everything. So this is based off of the particles we generated right and let's just have the pyro the dot that die after frame 48 so we go in here we go to the solver we go to um no we go to the source i mean and in the birth i think we just animate this down to zero and then we don't have any objects anymore so it's on one and then we say set key, uh, keyframe, alt mouse, alt, alt left. And then we just have it die. So now you can see it's going to towards zero. If I play this, whoop, they just die. And we can also add in the gravity or we can even in here do um, a pop force. And we can plug this, where would it need to go? In here, I guess. Pre-solve, was it in here? So we can visualize it too. Let's see, guide it. Hmm. Not sure, unit four. Oh, is it, um, oh, sorry, is that just amplitude? Yeah, we just want amplitude actually. So this is now like creating like some random stuff to it. And you can see, I think you can see that there's some motion unless I'm not doing it right. Let's see if we, um... no, we don't need this as far as I know. If I disable this, is that better? So this is a pretty straight line. 
If I control click the brain at the bottom, it just refreshes the Sims. Yeah, you can see now it actually did break it up. And I'm, I'm in a pretty large scale. So we are actually pushing particles out by 50 units. So just because my circle is super large and everything, it's like a very large stream of particles. So that's why it might be a bit acting up a bit. All right, so we have this. And what we can do now, file cache it, and it will just, we don't actually have it saved. So let's just hit Control S here. Man, nothing is working. I can't even hit save. I can't even save the freaking scene. <laughs> oh no, the, it's here. Oh man, yeah, I don't know. The Houdini window is on top. I have no idea why or how I did it. So let's just do um, stream stuff. Save it. This is saved. So now file cache, we can just, um, either we can just um, save it to disk which we'll do a hip geo, we'll create a subfolder, I hope. And we can obviously change my range to maybe just be 120. So it's not doing the whole range. And we can either just play it back or we can just say save to disk, which will run it as well. Not it will just not show it, I, I guess. So now this is saved and now we can just say load it from disk all the time. And now we help the solver to always read the the particles and it does not need to sim it. So this is something you should do when you do sim stuff, just cache everything before it goes into solvers. And in the solver now, um, it does some already because I'm on frame 37 and I've started to view it. Um, so it's still doing it. All right, so <laughs> super dense now. Um, but you can see now we have some super nice um, fluid here. Just because we added uh, quite a lot of um, noises and whatnot. And in the solver itself, or not in the solver, but on the top level, you can specify the voxel size. And if we go a higher voxel size, we should get faster sims and a lower resolution. Can see now this is normally how you would work set up a low like a high voxel count and you can see now it's it's almost like a huge cloud it's just passing through or something and we don't have any dissipation right now dissipation means it's essentially um, the smoke disappears over time and we can simulate that in the solver by going to um, look, solving, shape, and dissipation right now is off. If I bring back dissipation, um, you can now see that the smoke will die. It, it's not even generated because it dissipates so fast. So if we reduce dissipation, you can see now it's coming out. Ooh, and then it dies, right? This is what dissipation is doing. It just like based on time, it just kills them. And then you have a few more like disturbance you can add. It's essentially what we did on the particles, but this is now on the voxel space. And you would always want to have some disturbance. Disturbance is, disturbance is mostly relevant if you have temperature, I believe. So it's just disturbing the edge of the volume. But if you want to have like big motions of, of volume, you would need a turbulence. So let's first mess around with turbulence. And you have settings for each of them independently, right? You can only dissipate on edges or whatnot, or only have turbulence on, uh, depending on the age, for instance, or, the or based on temperature. Uh, all right, so now we have, it's always a bit harder to see this because you don't see a proper A, B. So anyways, what we have now is whatever this is with this value. If I put this to three and control click the brain, it will now sim in the background and then it will update until it's done. Did we see, did you see any difference? I didn't see anything at all. Um, let's reduce the swirl size and control click the brain hmm 
I'm not seeing any changes here. Maybe this is just not high enough. Hmm. Oh, influence field temperature. I don't have temperature. Let's try now. Yeah. Um, I was influencing temperature, but I actually never wrote temperature to this. Obviously, I can, which I maybe should, because then it would rise temperature, and the pyro source creates that for me. So it will always as default as a value of one. Um, I'm just having a, a RTX GPU. Uh, but but I previously without RTX is it, it will show it too. I just the one thing I did to to make it look nice is adding lights. If you don't have lights, it will look super flat, um, like this. If you you want to add lights so you can actually see shadows in the viewport. Um, all right, so where were we? Uh, we created temperature, so now we have temperature in here, but we still need to cache it to disk. So let's just run the cache again. So uh, load from disk off, save to disk. So now it will do this whole jazz again. And in the meantime, I will get some water. Lots of uh, pressure. So that saved it to disk already. Let's see if it actually did save it. All right, we got these cubes now, and the cubes we, we shouldn't matter. It, it's just visualizing temperature and density at the same time. It's not. It shouldn't be uh, affecting the sim. I think. I, I hope not. Um, okay, we definitely have still the tur turbulence in here. So let's just kill turbulence, kill dissipation, and oh, my ears a bit broken. So now let's see what happens. If you view it from the side, you can see now we have temperature and now it's actually rising. We didn't see that before. So now the smoke is going upwards, right? That's because we added the temperature. And la 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 shape. So before, if you bring back turbulence, this was based on temperature. So now it will do a, it will break up the heat of the volume so it will actually say okay some are cooler and some are hotter so you see it should now go up a lot faster and it goes down too because we are actually breaking it up obviously 50 is crazy let's go maybe try five And you can see now we still have a super small density here or a super high frequency, super high frequency turbulence field. And um, what else did we change? We can increase the swirl size maybe. Let's see what that brings us. Love from India. Thanks, Ravi. All right, so now you can see what we're getting by just increasing the swirl size. We get way more breakup, and which is fine. I think it's a little too much. Let's go in two. Let's bring back dissipation and uh, let's see what we have now. And this is essentially how you do. I guess this is how you do. Volume. You start with a super coarse um, voxel grid or voxel size, um, and then you just um, mess around your sims until you're happy. And this looks actually a pretty cool result for <laughs> the really rough start I had today. Um, so now we can probably go to, oh, that's the look. So actually I boosted it a bit, that's fine. Um, go to voxel size and let's go on the default point one and see what this looks like. And you can already see it's getting way slower. Uh, 
And you might be asking the bottom piece why that looks so crappy. And oh yeah, it's a great question, Ole. I can show you that. So the question is how you would you export this to uh, Maya, for instance? And the key is to export VDBs. And we can totally do that. And yeah, let's do that and try to render this in, in Maya. And then that's a good good closing idea to do. Almost looks like a car kicking up to yeah, like a fast car going in the desert, right? Like going so fast and then whoosh, yeah, yeah, I see that too. Um, okay, let's go in like a higher voxel just for the sake of exporting this 0.5. And what I want to do now, let's see actually if we can do it VDB, VDB, and then oh man, did I know how to do that? Convert VDB, the convert VDB. Nope. Uh, let me think quickly. So first of all, you need to um, fix the vox, uh, the velocity. What was it called? Uh, let me just read through this. VDB, not morph, not reshape. I think vector merge is what I want. So what this is doing, oh, we, we might need to do we need to do that? Oh man, let me. I hope I can do it. Let's just do a null here and go up and create a geo node and go in here and we do a volume import. I think it was called volume import. Import or oh, dop import. What was the dop import field? So stop import fields uh, dot net is in circle oh man it's again behind it I freak out it's in Ooh, is it here Uh, where's my top node? So actually the first time I'm working with the um, Pyro Solver, I think. Is it really this? No, oh, that's my particle sim. It must be in here. Oh, going crazy now. How did I do it? I don't want the solver. I guess the top node is the solver, is it? Ugh, I don't know. Preset, smoke. Oh yeah, it seems to work. Lucky me. Okay, so this is now, it's not cached yet. And you can render this essentially on the fly, or you can somehow convert this. Um, I think you just use a VD. Let's first of all, we need to do this vector thing. Let's actually see. Why can't I see what um, fields I have? So volume visualize. Density is density. Okay. So this is just visualizing now the field, but I still, I'm still, oh, is it also behind it? Oh man, what the fuck? You can see now it's, it's behind it. What the hell? There must be some always on top function here, which I hit accidentally. There was something. Hmm. Okay, this is this is just a nightmare. But anyways, we have this. So what I want to do is VDB. What was it called? VDB uh, vector merge, which is important to do because it will speed up your rendering quite a bit. So this is essentially converting the voxel x, y, and z coordinate into a single um, VDB, 
a uh, velocity value, not a VDB. Oh, I can't even visualize this now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I need to just try to do it blindly. And I think you just do a file write as a VDB. You can try that. And let's just do a, do it here, desktop folder. Let's just yeah, let's just do it in here. Uh, VDB smoke, and we want oh, what was it now? Uh, dollar zero four D. I guess it's not that. Um, what was it? Was a shortcut for this? Anyone knows? As oh, it's dollar F, I think. <laughs> dollar F, EB. Yeah, so this gives me now 30. That's just cool. I'm not sure why it's complaining. Unable to read, it should write. All right. All right, let's just try to write it. Obviously, you need to play it to write it. So now it's writing it. And I think they, it's written now to disk. You can see the VDBs are here. We just have one kilobyte. So it's definitely not doing what it's supposed to. Uh, so let me just figure out how we did that. Export VDB. Houdini. Um, can we get better quality here? So he's using a convert VDB. VDB. So I'm just checking on the second monitor. So yeah, okay. That's interesting. So you do this vector merge thing, and then there's a convert VDB like that, and you oops, you hook it up like this, and then this here. And you convert this to a VDB. You don't want any changes, of, but he's he did do some changes. You can just specify the the channels you want, I believe. But we want we want that. We just want everything. And then file cache, and then he's using a VDB. Okay, so we were pretty close, I think. So we just were missing this one. So let's just try this again. Um, if we play, write files, play again. Let's hope it did write them now. Did not. Um, why didn't it do it? So let's try the file cache. And we just do the same. Let me just call it, let just delete them here. Save to disk, let's try what happens. Still just one kilobyte, so something is not correct. Unless it is just one kilobyte, but I can hardly believe it. Oh man, I didn't, <laughs> I think that's my problem. I didn't connect it. Let's try again. Yeah, now we have some data. Man, sorry for this again. All right, so now we have wrote, uh, written this to disk, everything. It actually looks not, it looks not too bad. Um, and now let's minimize this. I'll just keep it open. 
No, let's go to Maya. Uh, let's forget that this scene ever happened. Don't save it. And then we can just do this. All right. And we can go to Arnold and we can go to volume and this expects a VDB. So you just open this up, desktop, VDB. <laughs> and you just uh, select it. I guess we start from one. And then it asks you what kind of fields you want. And for now we just want density and we want a file sequence. So we have the same things now when we should be able to visualize this, I believe. Um, and here, uh, we can pick, oh, why is velocity just, oh, this is not correct. The velocity stuff is not correct. It should just be one velocity field. Uh, let's go back here. So why is this, why didn't this do it? Back to type. Um, remove source VDBs. Can't even show it, which sucks. Ah, there we go. So this should actually combine the velocities. Why it does this not combine them? Let's see. Um, was it split? I thought it was vector merge. Um, let's try this. Oh, maybe we need to, oh, we might need to do this first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, first convert, then you do the merging. Sorry, that makes sense actually. So now we just have val instead of, instead of uh, val x, y, and z. So it's essentially combining all the velocities. You can see it's actually blazing fast. All right, so now we have this, and uh, let's maybe just delete it. Uh, we just create a new one, volume, and we pick it again. Let's so for one twenty. Now it's just val. That's correct. Use file sequence. That is nice. Where is our little thing now? It's gone, gone with the wind, as my whole freaking scene is. Select. Okay, there it is. Velocity, val. And I always thought you can visualize this as well. Like I, I thought you could see the, see it. Hmm. Hmm, anyways, maybe not. All right, so let's just do a light. Let's do, for now, area light. Do this, large boost exposure to 15. Hit render, see what we get. What do we get? madness where you obviously need to assign stuff um, assign new material Arnold it's weird that it never shows up in here um, Arnold volume standard volume shader and select it and assign it and hit render. Huh, I'm actually, you see this, something is just, just busted today. I need to restart and let my computer sleep. All right, so um, you can see it's nice and fast though. We get the volume in here. We can scrub, I think, and it should update because VD VDBs are just insanely fast if it's uh, low. And we also have velocity split into one single pass, so it's as well super fast. 
uh, you might ask why does it look so crappy and it is because we did not have a super high voxel grid um, so we can have densities right the same as in Houdini and we can also apply motion blur that's why we have the vel pass and you would go to motion blur enable this <laughs> windows update yeah i need that too um, and this should already read the velocities i believe automatically uh, let's see yeah i think that's all you have to do to get the motion blur working Vel is on. Yeah, this is all set up. So it should actually blur it automatically. I, th I believe it, it would. Maybe we just don't see it because it's not moving fast enough. All right, what we can do now, we just go to Houdini and um, let's just go to our, uh, wherever it is, Pyrosolver and go maybe down to 0.25. Go back to our geo and we cache it here. And let's just do a uh, save to disk, which is now caching it out again. And it should pick up speed again towards the end because we are killing the particles. Um, what if my smoke is colored? Does it pick it up automatically? It only picks it up automatically if you have the uh, correct attributes on it. Right now we don't have any color. Um, so it would, yeah, I think um, it would not pick it up automatically um unless you have it like is it a scatter color yeah it, it would maybe you would need to specify a challenge so if you have your attribute in houdini called color this would pick it up i think color channel color this would do it we can try it maybe uh, but let's first see if we have now a more dense mesh i think it is more detailed now I think it looks more detailed, but we don't get this amount of detail, right? This is not the same. So why is that not the same? I, we might have a few, it might be, um, sorry, where is it on the shape here? So I think we can play with the step size and I'm not sure if I go crazy, if it will break. Okay, that didn't do anything. Let's go 05. Hmm. Interesting, we're still not getting the detail, what if automatic step size? Yeah, is that something I would need to find out why we don't have the same details? What is step scale? That's, I guess, the automatic thing. What does 50 do? Oh, 50 did something. Nothing good though. Yeah, something I need to check out. I have no clue why it's so choppy. Like I was hoping we get the same kind of look and feel. So that's from 63. Coincidentally, we were on 63 as well. Looking down.
I don't know. It might be. It might be close, but maybe it's. It's not. I don't think it's the same. Reduce. We can do though. Oh, we can do this. We can use. Uh, oh, what was it called? Uh, volume. Sample float. We can sample the density. Uh, we can plug it into density. And we can mess around with some values. So we can add essentially more contrast to this. Think of this as a range node where you are just, instead of changing to like just a regular float, you're actually changing voxels. Yeah, but it will not help us add detail, I believe. Uh, you could add some displacement here too. I think we can just do a just noise. Is there a um, display? I thought there was displacement. No. What happens if we just plug it here? Um, man, I thought there was a displacement slot here. So you were actually able to um, displace the volume. Do we need a displacement shader? Maybe. Yeah, it is, is there, uh, did I just not see it? There's a displacement on the node itself. On the standard, you mean? No, right? You're talking about the shader, I think. Oh, there it is. I'm just super, super blind. Thank you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this actually did it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. So um, let's see. So you can see what this is doing. It just, it, it, it can help to add more detail to your Sims. If you do it very subtle, you can add more detail by playing up a little uh, subtle noise to it. You can see now, obviously this is a bit too much, too high frequency. And I think you should have it in vector space. So it's actually doing it in an XYZ space. And now this is obviously too much. Um, Is it the amplitude? Yeah, so but just you can just adjust the amplitude a bit just to get some kind of detail. And uh, we can try quickly to get the color. I haven't tried that myself. Um so I would believe you would do it in the sim. Oof. How would you do it? Maybe you need the particles to have a CD. So pop nut, top nut, top nut comes in here. Let's just do a random like that. Pyro source. We want to add another channel, color, CD. Um, I'm not sure if we need to do it after. Let's also add it to our thing, CD. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping it would actually pick up the colors now. Didn't though. Let's run the quick file cache, save to disk. It's overriding our particle sim. Oh, oh, oh. Script 68 stats. 
Looks like I got a little virus here. Vex code, cache. Why would it think that's a virus? Man, we're getting all sorts of things today. Yeah, not sure. Luke Filewalker is, is doing its thing. So we have the new file cache now like this. And I hope we do have CD now. And we have this and this has CD grid, I hope. No, this doesn't have VD grid, v, uh, CD grid. So we need to add, add it here too. Let's just add a new field and we want CD. Is that how it works? Hmm. I'm not sure. So the CD is still not in this. Yeah, no, we can visualize it. We should have it as a smoke. Oh, we can actually convert it to VDB in here directly. Interesting. Oh, that's all. <laughs> I think this is doing the whole thing I did before already in one go. And it does also the, 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 it also combines it already to a VDB, uh, to the combines the velocities. That's cool. Oh, we're not sourcing CD. That's why we can't write CD. So we first need to source it, which means it's added to the, added to our simulation. I guess CD goes to CD. Come on, get colors. Or is it color? Hmm. I know Antagma has a tutorial on this. Um, so I was hoping that we, we would get some color now. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's see if I can find something quickly. Um, Houdini pyro color. Colored smoke, colored smoke. All right, so let's just quickly check it. So he already has color, so we are not actually here yet. So he has a geo source from density. But where is he sourcing the color from? So he has a colored geometry, does a pyro import. I don't know. Let's try this. Okay, color. Okay, this CD. It's, um, Sources vector CD. Hey, Stubble Studios. Um, target field alpha. Okay, what else is he doing? And then and he's he's using it separately. Yeah, it might be a bit more involved then to get it to work. It doesn't seem to be super straightforward. So CD is definitely CD and it's not 
Um, we can just copy it over. We want the same colors. I'm still surprised we don't see it. And I'm also surprised that it's not, oh, now it's writing it. So maybe if I go now in here where we import, this is actually now VDB already. Um, if I do a volume visualize and we visualize, um, where was it? Density is fine. We can use a mission and use CD. I was hoping we should see it now, but yeah, I might give up on this. Uh, I'm a hundred percent sure how we get the color working. Unless someone knows how to do it. Like I was hoping this was the way to do it. And we don't need all this jazz anymore, actually, um, because we have it as a VDB already because our exported, like um, our solver does it. And here. Yeah, it's late and I'm heading to bed. <laughs> you can see my brain is totally fried. Uh, but it's just, I you see, I'm still like, I'm, I still find it very interesting though. Eyes are invisible. I don't think we need that. We definitely don't need this to export. I mean, you don't need temperature. So it's just CD now. Hmm. Yeah, anyways, guys, um, I'll call it, I'll call it. So at least we got it to render in Houdini. So it's 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 just half bad, I guess. Uh, let's hit play here. And the cool thing is we can almost hit play and see it rendered. So yeah, I hope uh, this wasn't too bad just because we had some issues in the beginning. Um, I will totally need to work on this a bit more, at least to get the stream working, right? To get no, that everything is being busted all over. Um, yeah, so guys, I want to thank you for joining and um, it would be great if you could follow me here on Twitch or if you're coming on the YouTube side, it would be great if you can get a subscribe or a like button on the video. So um, have a great day wherever you are. It was, yeah, it was super entertaining because I mess up all the time. Um, cool, guys. Um, yeah, enjoy the day, and I will see you totally in the next session.